Do you realize sometimes that people go gaga over Excel dashboards, especially after they see the interaction, the buttons, and as soon as somebody clicks on the buttons, the chart changes. So I thought, why not I share two tricks of how do you make Excel dashboard interactive? The first thing I'm going to teach you is how to use this checkbox button so that the chart also gets impacted based on the user's choice. The second thing is how to use this option button to perform a scenario analysis and accordingly the chart will also get impacted. So let me get started. The first thing you need is developer tab. Now to do that, you can go to file, you can go to option or you can click on this small drop arrow, which will take you to more commands. And when you go to more commands, it automatically takes you to Excel options. Within that, if you go to customize ribbon, so once you reach there, you will see something called developer on the right hand side. You just make a check mark so that it can be brought on your tab or your ribbon. Next, let me get started with the practice. Now, the first thing I need to do is have my raw data, which indicates current year sales and previous year sales. So I'm going to write a formula to get the same set of numbers here. And that should be based on a certain condition. For example, let's say true is what I write here. Okay. If I write is equal to if, and if this is true, let me freeze that up. Then in that case, please pick the value from the current year sales. Simple. However, if that's not the case, please give me a function called NA bracket open and close, and then finally close the main parenthesis enter. Now, why would I do that? I'll show you when I copy paste this down and then I make a chart and then you realize why this any function is needed. I choose both of this data. I go to insert and I make a basic column chart. Now let's say I create a false value in place of true. Notice your chart goes blank. The understanding here is if you have any as an output in the column, then the chart doesn't pick up those values. And how will you get artificially the NA error by writing NA bracket open and close. Now that's exactly what I wanted to do that. And therefore I bought in the true and the false. Now the question is Rishabh, I don't want my user to write true and false by hand. So what do I need to do? I need to bring in interactivity in the form of check boxes. All right. So let me start from the very beginning so that you can get the end to end sequence of action to be performed. First, let's go to developer. Second, Go to insert tab, you'll see something called form controls. In that you'll find something which says checkbox item. You click on that, draw a small checkbox and you will get this entire thing as a whole. Now I'm going to just say here, current year, delete the rest of the text. Next, I'm going to configure this. So I'll say right click, go to format control. And in that it says that, hey, cell link, which cell do you want it to be linked with? Let's say I choose the cell which says I1 and I say, okay. Now, if I choose this on, it says true. If I choose this off, it says false. I need something similar for the previous year sales as well. So I simply copy that control V and I'm going to change the configuration very soon. So right click format control and in the cell link, I'm going to change that to the cell which says K1. Okay. Of course, I'm going to change the text inside that. So edit text and that will give me PY or previous year. So as you can see, the configuration has been made. We'll talk about the alignment later, but as of now, let's see what is the use case. I write a function if this is true. So I don't have to write equal to true because anyways, it takes automatically false or true as a value for logical test. If it is true, give me the current year sales number. If not, then any bracket open and close and then close the bracket. Now ensure that when you do that, you must freeze this first cell, which indicates false or true F4 done. I'm going to copy paste this down. Easy stuff. Similarly, if function, if this is true, freeze that comma, then take the value from previous year sales else. Just give me any function, which is an artificial way of bringing the any error. Once this is done, I need to choose the month column, press control, choose the current year sales and followed by the previous year sales. Then you make a basic column or line chart. Let's say if I make a line chart, 
Right now, it doesn't show any value. However, when I choose current year and previous year, it does show me the chart. Of course, the chart doesn't look so great. So what I'll do is I'll smoothen the line. Right click format data series under the fill bucket option under the line. You will see something called smooth line. I'll do the same thing for the other line part, smooth line. And of course, if you wish to change the color, you can right click and go to outline and change the color. So these are basic formatting techniques, which will allow you to make your chart look more easy to understand and aesthetically appealing. Now, once that is done, I would want to keep both of these check boxes on top of the chart. So I can go to format and say, Hey, let's make sure the chart is sent to the back. Then if I actually move this chart up or down, you'll see these check boxes on the top. So I'll right click and then I'll just move this to make sure that it is appropriately placed for any user to click on that. Once it is done, there you go. Previous year, current year, current year, previous year. I hope this was useful. So this is something that you can use to bring interactivity to your dashboard, to your chart and something similar. I am going to teach you in the next trick, which involves option button. So you see, if you choose base case, what is the projections for the sales for these upcoming five years, best case, worst case. So let's go to the practice sheet. And of course, all of this is available in the description below. You can go to the description, download the practice file for now. Let me show you how this works. First, let me go to developer, go to insert tab in that I look for form controls again, but this time my target is not checkbox, but the option button. I click on the option button. I make one. It's as simple as drawing a shape in a PowerPoint. And then I'm going to name this. Let's say I'll name this as base because that's what the sequence on the top is mentioned as, and I'm going to copy and paste this two more times. But before I do that, let me see how do I configure. So I right click, go to format control. It says, which cell do you want to modify with this small option button? I'll say, let's say this one. Okay. So when I choose that, it becomes one. Now, when I copy this, I'm going to paste this twice. Control V, control V, correct? Of course, I'm going to change the name of each of these option boxes. The second one could be the sequence best. And the third one, of course, will be the worst case scenario. Of course, the alignment is not so great, but before I do the alignment, you must see what's happening. I click on best, it becomes two. I click on worst, it becomes three. So basically the user will be choosing these option button and there will be a cell which will capture the value as one, two or three based on the choice. So right now what I do is I will want to select all of them. So I right click on the first, press control, right click on the second, right click on the third. Then I go to shape format to make sure I can align them left and align them distribute vertically. Correct. Now this looks cool so far, but this is not the coolest part. I go to developer again, I go to insert and there is something called group box. It's like a boundary. It's like a fence. You create a fence and ensure that the group includes the periphery of all the three different options. So I can easily find that out by right clicking and you can see the boundary. It's part of this enclosure. So I'll modify the size. I can just give this a name. Let's say, Hey, choose a scenario. Once this is done, let's see how to use this in our values here. So I'll be using the index formula. Let's see how this is used index. This is my current array comma, which row number do you want to pick the value from row number two and which column column is one. So that's for sure. Enter. Now, if you choose base, best or worst, you can see the values changing. So before you copy paste this, just ensure that this C11 pointing to this number three is frozen or locked with dollar using F4. Once that is done, I'm going to simply copy paste this right. And let's see what happens. Base case, best case, worst case. So automatically based on the user's choice, the options of base, best and worst are chosen. Now I'll be taking this data and the one in the next, and I'll make a simple column chart. Now, if you do that, remember, since you have taken the starting point as these years, which are primarily numbers, and because of that chart has understood that as a number and included that as a data series. So I'm going to rectify that. 
I right click, go to select data, ensure series one is removed. Ensure I go to edit and in the edit, the label range is mentioned as these years. Okay, see how easily this has been done. I can delete this and I can just compress the size of the boundary of this chart. Now, if I choose base, best and worst, everything looks fine except for the fact that the axis value keeps on changing. So I wish to go to format axis and make sure I have a maximum value, which is a maximum of all these sales combined. So maybe 450 could be an appropriate number. Enter. So base case, best case, worst case. It's easy to compare when the axis labels are common. So I can go back, right click, go to format axis and make sure this minimum is zero, enter. Now I can change the jump value to be, be let's say 100 or maybe 200. You will see the difference goes down and you can see the jump value to be from zero to 200, 200 to 400. So best case, worst case. So I hope you found this easy and simple to execute. Of course, I did not learn all of this in a single day. So you may have to come back to this channel, practice again with the practice file that I've given in the description below. How was it? Did you like it? If yes, please do let me know your thoughts in the comment section and I will keep on bringing more such videos on how do you add those interaction with the Excel dashboards. I'm Rishabh and I'll see you in the next video.